So having found loads of different ways to calculate with multiplication and division, we then um, moved on to looking at multiplication and division through loads of different contexts. And today we're going to go for finding factors. So I hope you're really going to enjoy that. Again, just to say, I've really enjoyed engaging with everyone and seeing all your work, which has been fantastic. Also, just uh, on a wider note, I thought it'd be a great time just to think about. I I've really seen over the last few days and weeks all the amazing sacrifices and things that people are doing. And uh, at this time, and I hope it's really kind of bringing people together. Uh, my brother and his wife work in the NHS. It's been amazing seeing what they've done as well. Find someone to thank after this video for, for what they've done for you over this time. Anyway, we're finding factors, uh, let's get going. We're gonna to start today getting warmed up with some of the examples that you've sent through. Um, I just wanted to show this one from Grace and say thank you, Grace, for joining in. We can't look at all of them, and this is one that I just wanted to share, but thank you so much. It's great to have your examples sent through. Um, <clears throat> but I thought we'll warm up with this one from Charlotte. Um, so Charlotte's question was this. So using this recipe, how can Layla make 100 cupcakes? Um, so pause the video and have a go at Charlotte's question. How much of each ingredient will be needed? Okay, let's have a look. And I hope we saw the, the relationship. It's about looking at the, this relationship between this recipe is 25 cupcakes worth. So for 100 cupcakes, well, I'm going to need four lots of this recipe, four lots of each of these ingredients, these sets of ingredients. If I'm going to make 100 cupcakes, oh, sounds like it'd be for quite a party. There we go, um, have a look at those, compare them to, uh, to your responses. Um, and then let's move on to, to this example. I love this example that again came through. Um, so for every four dogs at the park, there are two cats. There are 78 animals at the park. How many cats? Now, you might wanna just have a go at this question as it is. And in, if that's the case, just pause the video now. If you want a little bit of a clue, I'm gonna show you the drawing that was provided as well with this question. So it's up to you when you pause the video. Here comes the drawing. So there we go, that was Kira's drawing. That might be helpful as well. Um, and it might be now you're gonna pause the video. Okay, well, let's have a look at how uh, Kira completed this drawing then. So we've got this ratio of four dogs for every two cats. Uh, it is 78 animals in total. So can you see 78 animals in total for these, uh, these six sections? So we've done 78 divided by six. And we've got 13 in each section there. Um, so then the question, I guess, is uh, how many cats? Can you see 78 divided by 6 is 13? 26. Great job, Kira. Love that one. Well, today's task, we're finding factors. We're going to explain what we mean by factors. There's going to be various challenges for us to dig our teeth into. Uh, so let's get started. Um, first of all, factors and multiples. So 4 times 3 is 12. Um, so this means that 4 is a factor of 12. 12 can divide evenly and, and leave 4. So 4 is one of the factors of 12. Um, 12 is a multiple of 3. So if 3 is multiplied, you, you get up to 12. So 12 is one of the multiples of 3. So there's a definition of a factor and of a multiple, or examples, I should say, really, of a factor and of a multiple. Okay, so have a look at this one. Which answers? So... Of this list, circle the factors of 12, and of this list, circle the multiples of 30. See if you can spot the ways I've tried to trick you there. Pause the video. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, the factors of 12, um, well, 4 and 6 are factors of 12. Uh, 36 is a multiple of 12, not a factor, and it can't be 0 0.5 because factors we're looking always at whole numbers. And multiples of 30? Uh, well, 90 is, 120 is, 6 is a factor, not a multiple. 200 is not a multiple of 30, because if I count up in 30s, 200 is not in that count. Again, 15 is a factor. They were really like the red herrings there. Okay, so let's see if we can look at finding factors. 15 multiplied by 8 equals 120. So here's a grid, 15 squares along, 8 squares down. So 15 multiplied by 8 is 120. Um, now that tells us that two of the factors of 120 are 15 and 8 because they go evenly into 120. Now I can also use the factors of 15 and 8 to find more factors of 120. Let me see if I can explain why. Like 4 must be a factor of 120 because if 8 is a factor of 120, so, so 8 go into 120, then any, uh, any factor of one of those factors 
must also be a factor of 120. I hope that makes some sense. The picture might make more sense than me. Because look, if this is a four and another four and that makes an eight, well then four must also be a factor of 120. I can count up in fours to get to 120. Um, similarly, 15 is a factor of 120. So, um, so five must be as well, because five goes into 15. I can count in fives and get to 15. It's one of 15's factors. Um, and in just the same way, 3 has got to be a factor of 120 as well, because 3 is a factor of 15. So I hope that's helpful for what's coming next. Um, so have a look at this. So 360 divided by 15 equals 24. List different factors of 360. You won't, we don't want you to do any calculation beyond mental calculation. And how does this that's provided, 360 divided by 15 equals 24, help you to find loads of other factors of 360? Pause the video and have a little go. Okay, so factors of 360. Well, of course, 15 and 24 are, but they're, they're given here because uh, 24 multiplied by 15 is 360 and, and so on. Um, but also five must be, it's a factor of 15 and three, and eight is a factor of 24 and, and 12 and so on. So lots of other examples you could have. 360 has got an amazing number of factors actually when it's broken down. Okay, mental or written calculations. So have a look at this one. Which of the digits from one to nine are factors of 624? I want you to have a look at that and think to be able to do that, which digits can I just work out mentally? Which of these digits I can see it is or it isn't a factor of 624 without really needing to do any calculation? And then which written calculations maybe do you need to do? So have a think about that, pause the video. Okay, let's have a little look. Um, so, well, I'm gonna say one definitely is. If I count up in ones, I'll certainly get to 624. And of course two is because it's an even number. And five isn't, because I know that multiples of five end in five or zero. Um, didn't need to do any calculation there at all. Now, actually, I know that three and six m both must be. Let me start actually with six. Um, six multiplied by 100 is 600. And then four more sixes gets me to 624. So six must be a factor. And if six is a factor, I know that three must be a factor because two threes go into six. Four. Now, actually, I can also work out that four is as well. And the reason that I know that four is, is because four is a factor of 100. So if I count up in the hundreds, four is always in that count. Okay. So 25 lots of four is 100. Uh, so 50 lots of four is 200. And, and so I know that, that 600, if I count up in fours, I'll get to 600. Six more fours, 624. So that is only leaving us with seven and eight and nine. Now, seven aren't, it, it isn't a factor of 624 and, and neither is nine. Now, how do I go about doing that? Well, let's say seven nines are 63. So seven nineties are 630 or uh, nine seventies are 630. And if I, the difference between 624 and 630 is six, it's not seven and it's not nine. Now, eight is. Now, eight is probably one where I think I would use a written calculation to, to do that. I'd, I'd probably look at doing 624 divided by eight. Uh, there's other ways it can be broken down as well. Um, but really important to think, well, when should I work it out mentally? And when should I use a written method? And so to today's tasks, which you can find by clicking on the blue link underneath this video, uh, we've got task A and we've got task B and we've got an extend task there. So for task A and task B, you've got to have a look at the number that's given and which of the digits from one to nine are factors of, for example, 128. Have a look and think, well, which can I work out immediately? I don't need to do any calculation for. There might be other numbers where to work out if it's a factor of 128, you, you need to do a few mental calculations, some you think a written calculation. Um, now, part two, have a look at the numbers and think, uh, how can you order them from the one with the least to the most factors? I wonder if you can predict beforehand which one you think will have the most factors and then compare. Um, so again, the setup of task B is similar, but the challenge in the calculation is slightly different. And then the extend task. We're back to those Venn diagrams. Um, so we're after two numbers in each section of the Venn diagram, and we want those numbers to be more than five and less than 50. So really looking forward to seeing how we get on with, uh, with that. And of course, I'll see you again tomorrow.